Uh, hello, everybody. My name is uh, Joris Oprins from studio Job, Joris & Marieke. We are a Dutch uh, animation studio doing uh, short films, music videos, uh, commercials and uh, series, and occasionally also a children's book. Um, this is our logo, so this is uh, the three of us. This is the three of us in real life. Um, the, uh, basically, our studio name is just the three names of us uh, combined but it's hard to pronounce for a lot of people, so we made a, uh, an anthem so people could know how our name should be pronounced. And uh, Jop is uh, our, uh, magic, uh, our composer also, so we had our daughters uh, sing the song about our studio, which is also our showreel. Uh, today I, wanna, I would like to uh, tell you a bit about our, uh, our work, uh, about the projects we've been working on uh, the last few years and about our future plans. Uh, it's not going to be a very... Uh, and in the end I will talk a little bit about uh, Double Life, our uh, latest film, and I will go into a little bit more depth for that one. Um, it will not be a very technical uh, uh, talk, but if you have questions, feel free to ask. I also brought some uh, project files with me, so maybe in the end we could also dive into that. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank uh, Maxon for inviting me to uh, talk about our work here. Uh, we've been working with Cinema 4D for, I think, since Real 8, I guess. Um, uh, when we started the studio, we, we uh, were looking for the least intimidating 3D package, and that was uh, definitely Maxon. Very easy to learn, and uh, we've been working with it for like 15, 20, 20 years, and still we haven't come across stuff we couldn't make with it. So. It's perfect for us, and there's still, I think, a lot of uh, great features we haven't even tried yet, so very happy with that. Uh, this is us uh, 20 years ago. We met, our, uh, we met each other, the three of us, at the Design Academy in Eindhoven. Um, it's uh, a great school if you want to study product design, but it's a very uh, rubbish school if you want to uh, become a filmmaker. And we, um, uh, uh, we wanted to tell stories, and you, know, you can't really tell stories with a chair or with uh, uh, other kinds of stuff, or water coolers, or those kind of things. So we decided uh, to start making films. In the beginning, we, uh, decided we uh, uh, did live action films with us as actors, which is also pretty rubbish. And then we, um, uh, the main problem with live action is that the actors never really look exactly the way you want. The, the, the lighting is never way, the way you want, the, 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 the timing, it's not 100% uh, controllable. And if you're control freaks like we are, animation is your best, uh, best tool. So we decided uh, to start working with, uh, uh, with animation. Uh, we first started out with stop motion. I don't know if this is a famous rabbit also for the rest of the world, but in the Netherlands uh, she's called Nijntje, in the rest of the world Miffy. It's a stop-motion series, and right out of uh, the, uh, when we uh, graduated, graduated from the Design Academy, Marieke and I started working as animators here. Uh, we, yeah, we really loved stop-motion, uh, also our graduation films were stop-motion. But uh, if you are uh, doing uh, commissioned work and you're working for ad agencies, they want to change all the colors in the last hour, and you can never do that kind of flexibility with, uh, with stop-motion, because that would mean you have to start all over again. So that was the moment we thought maybe it would be wise if we start working in, um, uh, in 3D. And that's when we, th we bought our first um, uh, cinema license. Uh, however, still a lot of stop motion uh, feel is in our work. So we st we, uh, a lot of our films are still um, uh, animated on 12 frames a second, which is uh, pretty, w uh, pretty weird to do in, uh, in a 3D package, but in stop motion it's very... Uh, uh, economical because you don't you just have to animate less and even in 3D it also means you have to render less frames so it's also uh, helpful uh, in that way and um, the way of lighting and the way of uh, making our props we consider our, our scenes really as miniatures so 
the stop motion way of uh, of designing is still in our uh, in our DNA, and um, we don't like it um, uh, when uh, uh, in a lot of uh, a lot of character animation you have uh, keep alive that characters never really set stand still. In stop motion, you would never do that because it takes a lot of time to keep him. So you just put him, uh, you freeze the character, and it just stays uh, frozen. And that's what we really like. So we uh, adopted a lot of stop motion stuff into our work. A, uh, this is an example of a series we came up with uh, years ago. And it started out in st uh, as stop motion, but it, uh, eventually the series was made with uh, computers, or with cinema, not with cinema, actually, but it's not done by us. So that's a little bit stop motion kind of look uh, made in 3D. Um, then when we started the studio, so we were uh, done uh, doing stop motion for Miffy, we started the studio and we were hoping uh, ad agencies would just out of the blue come with uh, projects to us, and they didn't. And that uh, made us think um, they don't know what we can make, so we have to have some proof that we can make something decent and then they might uh, ask us back. And um, uh, the best way to do that for us was making music videos, because then um, uh, you, you, are your, you, uh, you don't really have a boss, so you can do whatever you like, uh, especially if uh, the band we are making a music video for is uh, Job's band. One of the three of us is also a composer, and he has a band called Happy Camper. So we made this music video for... Um, I'm going to show a small clip for Happy Camper. And it, it's about this um, uh, uh, yeti who will always go camping, and uh, turned out to be... Uh, a great character for, uh, for the music video and all the artwork. After that, we were asked to make a music video for uh, Gers Padu, which is a, a Dutch uh, hip-hop artist. And uh, uh, this is still one of the biggest uh, hits. You're not hearing it right now, but it's one of the biggest hits in the Netherlands. After that, we uh, got the chance to do another uh, hip-hop music video. Um, and uh, the song is, is called uh, It Takes Too Long, or It's Been Too Long. And we were looking at a, a concept that would fit that, uh, that song, but also we had very little time to make it. And we decided if we would do a stop motion of our, our uh, slow motion video, we only had to animate a few seconds and then spread them out, and that would result in a clip. That, yeah, uh, then we came to this mesmerizing uh, style, so very economical and pretty clip. And this is the third music video we did for, or the second we did for uh, Job's band Happy Camper about uh, um, some sort of uh, musical chairs with uh, drum kits. And uh, we did also this music video for uh, Blautsoon, which was also to announce uh, the city we are in, Utrecht, uh, as the starting point for the Tour de France. And uh, the last clip we did was for Fed Le Grand, uh, about uh, self-learning robots that learn how to dance very well, like this. So music videos was uh, the, starting, the start of our studio, and we really enjoyed making them. But if you want to tell stories, it can be a bit um, annoying to have the song also in uh, uh, it, somebody singing through your film. That's a bit how it started to feel for us. So we thought maybe it's best to make a, a really short film and a really short film and not a music video. And the first one we made was uh, mute. Uh, here it goes. Thank <laughs> you. 
So um, the idea for this film came from uh, a time I was uh, swimming and I cut my toe and it looked a little bit like a mouth. So I started to talk with it and most people found that very appalling. But um, Marieke and Job really uh, liked it and they thought we, uh, we should make a film with that. So we, uh, we started to look at uh, a lot of different ways that you can cut yourself a mouth or try to cut yourself a mouth. And, um, uh, we also uh, use a lot of mood boards to, to, to define the, the style and the, the look of the film. Um, and we wanted that to have a little bit of an uh, East Europe feel to the, to the set. So we went on a, on a, a trip with uh, Google Maps through uh, Bucharest to get some uh, inspiration. And for the close, uh, we, uh, we learned that people at the UN uh, are very bad dressers. So if you <laughs> look at the UN, you can find a lot of nice clothes to copy. So that's where we, <laughs> where we got this one. Um, as you might have noticed, a lot of our characters have a very specific uh, 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 character design, and a lot of times they're based on uh, the pill shape. Uh, we like very simple shapes. Um, uh, a lot of times we, uh, we think uh, which features or body parts uh, uh, do we need for the, for the story. And for instance, a lot of our characters don't have necks, don't have a nose, uh, don't have ears. We like to keep it as simple and stylized as possible. Um, but a few years back, we started to have the discussion, when is it a pill and when is it a sausage? We make this film about this dilemma. Pill, sausage. Pill, sausage. Pill, Bill, 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 Sausage, Bill, Sausage, Bill. 
Bill, 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 So that's the exact moment it becomes a, a sausage. Uh, after uh, Mute, we, all we wanted to do was making uh, short films. So uh, we got the chance to make a short film to be screened in front of uh, uh, feature-length films in the Netherlands. In, it was a, a program for cinemas to uh, have a, I think you call it a featurette, a short film in front of them. Um, and we got the chance to make A Single Life, which I'm going to show now. It's very short. Thank you. Uh, the idea for this film is pretty old. Um, the three of us uh, used to study together and when we were sitting in my room uh, listening to some vinyl records, uh, for some reason uh, Waterloo by ABBA was playing and it skipped. And we thought, did the record skip or did we travel in time a little bit? And that was like the basis of the, of the idea. And it stuck with us for, for years until we finally got a chance to make, uh, to make this film. And we uh, used the, uh, as a reference for the uh, for the set, we used my uh, student room. So this was actually the place where we heard the ABBA record. And we thought uh, that's, that should be the, the, her place also. Um, this is us getting, uh, getting really excited. Uh, here, here we heard we got uh, nominated for an Oscar. Uh, that was in 2015. We never even uh, thought about entering the Oscar race because it's an extremely short film. It's only, it, it would have been um, a spoiler, we're not going to win. But uh, if we would have won, uh, we would have been the, the, the shortest one ever. Um, so we didn't even think about entering. But uh, luckily, we have a very uh, smart uh, distribution lady, and she entered it. So we were very surprised and happy uh, uh, we got to go. And uh, part of the deal was that we uh, uh, could, uh, um, the two weeks before the, uh, the Oscar night, we got a tour um, offered to us, uh, to all the animation studios in the, the Bay Area. So that was really great. We got to visit Pixar and uh, this, uh, so, uh, uh, all, the, all the others. Uh, it was really great. It was also very interesting that we obviously look up to those uh, big studios, but when we talked to a lot of people there, um, uh, quite a few were really like, oh yeah, I would also like to have a very small studio of three people uh, making your own stuff. So it was like a reminder that uh, that's, that's not us. We, we, we shouldn't try to be a, a huge studio. Just making your own stuff is also a way to get there. Um, 
there was a bit of a problem with uh, the book you're seeing there. Uh, it's Time on My Side by Marty McFly. Uh, that was like a homage Job decided to put into uh, for uh, Back to the Future, the greatest film ever. And we, uh, we thought, we knew you couldn't use the name Marty McFly in a film, but who's ever going to see the film? But uh, then it was nominated for an Oscar. And then it turned out uh, uh, the writer, producer of Back to the Future got to see the film. And so we got an email with, uh, uh, with a header saying uh, Back to the Future. So we thought, now we're screwed. Now we're going to, uh, we, we, we can just go back home because this is going to be a big problem. But it was him congratulating us with, uh, uh, with the film and thanking us for the homage. We were very relieved. We were <laughs> extremely worried. Uh, at the end of the tour, we actually went to the to the Oscar night where uh, Disney stole our uh, Oscar with Feast, but it was still still a, pre uh, a charming film, but we were a bit disappointed. And um, we uh, also uh, released the song of the film, which Job made uh, on vinyl, so people can try it home if it actually works. <laughs> we haven't heard back of those people. Um, the next project I'm going to show you is uh, Otto. It's nine minutes. It's on our website. I can't show it uh, completely, but I can show uh, the trailer. <laughs> So uh, basically, the idea for this film is um, uh, this girl has an uh, imaginary friend called uh, Otto, and um, it's getting stolen by another woman because she is childless and she wants that child for herself. So that's the, the idea for the film. It came from uh, my daughter. She had an imaginary duckling, and she was playing with it, and uh, she uh, presented it to uh, grandma. And grandma misheard her, and she thought she was saying uh, she was being offered food, so she took a bite out of the duckling. <laughs> and uh, no, she was crying her eyes out, and we were a bit uh, uh, surprised how, how seriously she took this. But also we were thinking, oh, that's a good idea for a film, if it's, if it's that serious. And we uh, got a daughter to uh, relive her pain uh, in uh, doing the voice. So the, the girl screaming is actually uh, uh, our daughter screaming. Um, uh, this is, I think, the first film uh, we made with uh, no pill shape characters, so it's, uh, it's like uh, they really have hats. Uh, but we thought we don't want a normal hat, we want a huge hat to make it uh, a bit more interesting. But that came with a lot of uh, difficulties. For instance, uh, if you want them next to each other, you have to have a very wide bed. Um, uh, so we, we really had to make these uh, plans to make sure that they could fit through everything with those giant hats. So we're not going to do that uh, again. And we made an uh, action figure of, uh, <laughs> of Otto. And next project I want to show is uh, not even... Um, uh, it's not a film, it's a, an installation. We were asked by a museum in the Netherlands to, uh, to you know, make something with, uh, uh, with animation, could be anything. And we, uh, as you will probably know, uh, stop motion is a sequence of uh, poses. And if you play that in succession, you get uh, motion. And we were wondering how would it look if you have all these uh, poses and you see them at once. So we 3D printed this whole thing. First we made this short animation. And this is the, the basic animation.
uh, freeze an adventure of 100 frames, so it's exactly 100 uh, uh, poses. Um, uh, printing these things took an awful lot of time. We have an Ultimaker, uh, Ultimaker uh, 3D printer. This is how, uh, how he does that. So you see all these, uh, uh, these little uh, uh, sticks, and you have to, to break them. And, if you, and they are exactly <laughs> the same as a leg, so the, can, the chance that you break a leg is pretty, uh, pretty big. Um, and um, uh, uh, overhang is really a problem with 3D printers, at, at least uh, those 3D printers. So if you have an arm like this, you have to have a lot of support, but if he's in panic and he has his arms like this, you don't have to make that much support because uh, he can print it at once. So the idea for the, the, the story also came from uh, we need a character having his high, uh, arms uh, high up in the air. Um, a lot of times the, these prints went wrong and we wanted to find out uh, why, that, why it went wrong. So we uh, put a webcam on it. And, um, uh, uh, and sometimes you could, you could decide to, 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 to go to the studio and fix it, and sometimes you, you thought, uh, just let it go, and we'll see in the morning what it turned out to be. And that's, for instance, this one. So here everything is going well. But then about here he tips something over, but he doesn't know that because he's stupid. So he just keeps on adding more spaghetti to the whole thing. So this is so the next morning you, you this is what you find so then you're a little bit disappointed, but it's also pretty, and we um, we really like the way uh, these sticks the supports how they look. So when um, uh, Job, our uh, composer, made his third Happy Camper album, we thought uh, we want to use that supports uh, in, in in the look, and uh, what we decided to do was. Um, uh, made an, uh, in cinema uh, a small loop of uh, a running character. Then we printed out all these uh, all these poses and then um, uh, put them on the table and uh, stop motion uh, 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 photographed them and made uh, this uh, loop, which is pretty mesmerizing, I think. Oh, sorry. So it's a lot of those characters. <laughs> can literally look at that for hours, but it's, we don't have hours. Um, next project I want to show is uh, Heads Together. In Dutch it's Kop Op, but I don't think a lot of people know what that means. Um, uh, we are, uh, one of our goals for the studio is to make a feature once, and we have uh, made a lot of very short uh, uh, music videos and uh, films, and this was an opportunity to make a 21-minute film. Um, also, again, I only uh, can show a, a trailer of it. This is Seth, oh. Wesley, this, uh, and Marjorie. Hi. Well, at least for now. Because a mysterious washing machine is about to turn their lives upside down. What? Well hoofd? Geen hoofd. Dat meen je niet. Dat is mijn hoofd. Heads Together is the new film by animation studio Job Joris and Marika. Loads of confusion, panic, and bad imitations. What is it with your I did Wesley na. So this this film is it. Uh, besides, it's a lot of fun to uh, have characters uh, uh, losing their hats and exchanging hats. It's also uh, a nice way of of kids to see how it would be to stand in somebody else's shoes. So that's, uh, that's the, 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 the main premise of the film. Uh, here's a little bit of the storyboard. It was a real challenge for us because it's 21 minutes long, it's got an awful lot of characters, so we had our own uh, small animation team for the first time, and we had these great voice actors. Um, it involved a lot of uh, lip sync, which was also new to us, and took didn't even take that long, but it's, uh, it's something uh, uh, we didn't, didn't do earlier. Uh, and for scenic experience, uh, this time we went to uh, where I grew up, which is a small town in the Netherlands. So here you see uh, the same uh, flyover. And uh, we got, uh, two weeks ago, we got great news that uh, we won an Emmy with this uh, film. So uh, we were, it's a very uh, good looking statue, we're very happy with that part of it. And uh, we are trying to get funding for the oh sorry, 
We're trying to get funding uh, uh, to make a series out of Koppel. We're, it's going pretty well, but it, we hope, hopefully, uh, having an Emmy helps uh, getting this project off the ground. So we, uh, that's our main thing for the next few years to get Koppel of Heads Together, the series. Uh, this one, it's called Passing By, and it's not uh, a short film, it's more of an installation. There's a department store in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, uh, called Bijkorf. And um, we were asked to do something for their um, uh, shop window. And we came up with an idea to make... Um, we were wondering, this building has been there for more than 100 years. Um, so uh, this, uh, uh, this shop win shopping window has seen uh, uh, Amsterdam change. And we wanted to make a film uh, which each decade we made a small clip and we find a way to combine those to a, a short film. So it was screened uh, on the shopping window on a uh, huge video wall. So as you see, it's a, it's a continuous loop. It is really uh, one of the great parts for this, about this project was uh, we had to come up with uh, 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 very. Uh, we had to investigate how uh, Amsterdam changed during the years, uh, how fashion changes. Uh, each scene has to be very uh, distinguishedly different. So uh, in color grading and in lighting, it was uh, uh, it was really a treat to make this. The um, last project I'm going to show you is uh, A Double Life. Um, it's a very, uh, very short, uh, a bit disturbing film about uh, gender roles. I'm going to show the trailer first. Oh, sorry. Here are some uh, of the design sketches. We started out uh, uh, with these storyboard sketches, and the middle one is how we pitched it. In the Netherlands, a lot of times you need to pitch your ideas at the Dutch Film Fund, but then you don't have the definite designs, and a lot of times it can uh, change an awful lot. So this is, uh, this is the, the, the big steps were made from the first design to the final design. Here you see, see, see um, an optimization of uh, the female character, like different hair styles, uh, eyes closer together, uh, nose uh, up and down. So finally we came up with this uh, final design. Um, this is how the storyboard looks. We, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a lot we, have to, we try to tell in only two minutes and 40 seconds. So it's really, and we were also not allowed to make it much longer, so it was really important to time everything uh, uh, perf perfectly. And uh, a storyboard is very helpful to present your ideas, but to have the, a very clear idea of the timing, we use these kind of very rude uh, uh, blockings a lot of times, so you can experiment with, uh, with timing, you can experiment with how many steps he needs to make, or uh, camera uh, angles, or those kind of things. Uh, another thing uh, you might have seen is this. This is the, the first Jopjo Smriki character with a nose. 
Um, there was a good reason for that. We wanted to improve the, the facial expressions of our characters for this film. Um, and uh, this black and white pictures are from a book from Paul Ekman. And he uh, wrote a book about uh, micro-expressions. And basically, he, um, uh, he, he studied uh, what are the eyebrows doing for which, um, uh, for which emotion? What is the m mouth doing for which emotion? So uh, it's very helpful for us. And it was uh, clear that uh, disgust really needs a nose. So you can see over here, can you see that? Uh, uh, you need these lines if you want to uh, convey uh, disgust. And we couldn't do that without a nose. So this is the reason this first character had a nose. This is a bit how our mood boards uh, look. Um, for instance, uh, um, the way uh, the, uh, the male character is designed, he, uh, he needed to be a very manly man. And we were thinking about, um, uh, we thought um, only a very manly man could pull off a bun and a pink suit. So we thought that fits really well with him. And we are constantly making these kinds of decisions, especially with this film, because on everything you can say, is it either male or female, and, and does it matter, or what's the difference? So that was really interesting. We, we like to think as, a, uh, as, as individuals that we are pretty uh, emancipated. So, for instance, Marike is my girlfriend, and we, uh, we share everything um, uh, equally. We divide uh, taking care of our ch children equally. So we thought we were, we were doing it pretty, uh, pretty OK. But then there was a scene where somebody needs to iron, and then it turns out I never iron, and she always irons, and then... So we're, we're not there yet. And here um, is a small uh, uh, example of how we, uh, how we test grading and uh, color palettes, because we decided it would be great if he would have the pink suit, then she would have the blue suit, and then you have a starting point for the whole color palette. Uh, we also have a cameo in the film. Uh, when uh, they run into the office, uh, they cross us, so we are in our own film. Um, yeah, that is uh, basically what I wanted to tell you, and I made it into the time I, uh, I had. So m does anyone maybe have questions or something? Yes? No, but a compliment. I really love your style and your stories and the idea behind the stories. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so how did you manage to um, finance the first the early days when you were back fresh from the university? Oh, that's a that's a good question. Uh, we um, uh, I think always a balance between uh, commercial work and uh, independent work. So uh, this music video, uh, we did a mu we, we we did one music video with hardly any budgets. Um, but we did a, at the, uh, but somebody saw that music video and asked us to do a commercial thing that paid for the uh, initial uh, initial thing. So mute didn't cost anything because we um, uh, we got paid for a project that was um, uh, the the result of mute. So we learned that if you make uh, if if you can show what you uh, what, uh, your best work in independent work, the chances are that you are going to get better paid after that because you got the chance to show how good you are. Uh, however, in the Netherlands, uh, there's, uh, there's possibilities for film funding. So that's, uh, the, uh, most films were f uh, funded by the, uh, the Dutch Film Fund, but Mute uh, didn't, and uh, we were very happy we could also make that one. Yes? How do your team dynamics work? Who does what? And how do you negotiate if there's different opinions? Um, it's uh, a, a good tip. Is a trio works really well because there's never um, uh, uh, it's, not, it's never one against one or two against two. So there's always a majority uh, if you are a trio, three person studio. So that works really well. Um, be, roughly, I'm uh, directing more. Uh, Job is the composer. Um, uh, animating is Marike and me. Uh, Marike does more of the writing, but the concept can come from all three of us. Uh, art direction a bit more on Job's side, but there's a lot of overlap. So we always uh, 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 we we never credit uh, uh, ourselves as uh, persons. It's just like uh, everything is done by the three of us. So, but there is um, uh, uh, in the studio there is some sort of uh, diversion, and it, uh, in the future we're going to do uh, bigger pro uh, projects. So then we need to have that more uh, each, uh, more of a hierarchy, hierarchy. We don't really have that now. So. Those are uh, new steps for us. Yes? 
how is your creative work, um, creative process working? At first, is there an idea or a character, or with what do we start, and um, how do you decide what project? I guess with three people, there are thousands of ideas coming together in one room. How do you decide which uh, project you want to finish? Or you yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't think we ever had a project where one of us thought this is great and the other two didn't think it was great. So most of the times it's, uh, uh, it's consensual, like, uh, yes, we should really do this. Uh, we have like a, a whiteboard uh, and we, we, we write down all ideas and sometimes an idea could stick on there for, for five years or something and then uh, finally there's an opportunity to start making it. But it's, um, uh, we're only three people, so we, our output is pretty limited. So there, if you're a 30-person studio, you can make a lot of short films, and we can only make one uh, each year. So uh, you have to decide really well, is this the, is this the project we're going to spend all our time on? So it's a hard decision, but most of the times so we're pretty much on the same page. But for instance, with the music videos we did for Job, it's a bit different because he's also kind of the client, because he's the band, so then, there's a, then he has a little bit more to say. But normally we have the same say. Uh, I could also uh, open a project file if somebody would be interested in seeing that. Yeah. Uh, so we work. Um, uh, our rendering we do with um, uh, with Octane, but ever si but we read that Maxon acquired Redshift, so maybe we need to look into uh, Redshift uh, in a while. Um, uh, but Octane has been working well for uh, for our uh, our projects. Uh, it's a quite a big scene. We uh, we like to use a lot of reference files, so um, uh, like you saw the this very rough uh, uh, blocking uh, I showed. You don't really have a, uh, need to have a completely uh, rigged character to start, in, to start doing blocking. You just have a very rudimentary uh, rigged character, and then you can uh, start. And uh, you keep up updating the reference file of the rig, so in the end, the same animation can be stuck on, uh, on the right character. So here's the, uh, the character. This is Ben. They always have names, even if they don't really need to have names. Um, I was really happy with, uh, with the options we had for his, uh, for his uh, facial expressions, like I explained. So we, we have uh, like uh, checkboxes for each syllable, but they didn't, they, 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 it, was, it was like <laughs> a feature we had, even though they didn't talk uh, at all in the film, so it wasn't really necessary, but we were lucky to have it. But this was, for instance, something that, uh, that we were happy with. Also, uh, I don't know where it is. Uh, um, is it here? Yeah, this is also a bit of a new one that, that you get this, uh, this crease there. We never used to have it, and now, we, uh, now we're really happy our characters can do that. Um, uh, Maxon also has the, the, the character tool, which is basically a way better rig than our own rig, because it's, it's, it's much more sophisticated and it's, it's got a lot more options. So it's partly because we are used to our own rigs, that we uh, build them, uh, build them ourselves, and also what we like about the rigs we built ourselves is that they are extremely simple. So there's a lot of uh, limits to what they can do. So you don't have the, um, you, uh, there's no danger of uh, getting the character out of shape or anything. It's just, and um, we feel that the more buttons you have, the more time it takes to animate. So if we know he only has to do these five things, we only make these five buttons. That's that's how we approach uh, uh, the, the rigging. And um, I don't know if it's, it's, if it's common use, but we'll use uh, 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 the cloth, uh, uh, cloth option for the, uh, for the clothes. So uh, we can, that way we can uh, animate with a very low poly naked character and put on the clothes on uh, later. Um, but uh, like I said, our pipeline is very, uh, very simple, and it's working really well uh, as long as we're a three-person studio, but now we're going to scale up for the series, so we're gonna, um, uh, we never worked with content management systems like F-Track or Shotgun, so there's, there's a lot for us uh, to learn for the next few years. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's our goals. Um, I want to thank uh, FMX and Maxon for the opportunity to present, and uh, thank you for the attention.